Hello everyone, I hope you're having a great day. In this video, I am going to explain in detail how you can create a very solid build for the Greatsword of Radan on its both variation, Lord and Light. I am going to address both weapons in this specific video, because they are indeed the exact same weapon, the only thing that changed is the skill. And I personally think that that's a very negative point about these weapons, but I will talk more about it later in the video. This Colossal Sword is probably the hardest weapon to obtain of the entire game, because in order to get your hands in this legendary blade, you have to defeat the final boss of the DLC. Radan Consort of Mikela. So as it is a weapon that is very hard to obtain, I am assuming that it is going to be extremely broken, right? Unfortunately, and for a reason that I don't understand, these weapons are very hard to build and the result is not going to be mind-blowing. But I can guarantee you that with the right setup, we can make these weapons at least reliable. But not everything are bad news. The good thing is that you can obtain both weapons without having to defeat Radan twice. First of all, I'm going to talk about the main features of the weapon, I will explain the details of the build and we will test it against the toughest enemies of the Land of Shadows. So we Without anything further to say, let's get the power of the young lion. If you don't want to farm runes or materials for your Elden Ring builds, MMO EXP is the best web service where you can easily acquire as much runes and items as you wish for the best price. Use my code CARLOSEN to get a 5% discount on your purchases. Thanks MMO EXP for sponsoring today's video. Ok guys, what we have here is probably one of the worst weapons of the DLC, cause in order to obtain this weapon, you have to defeat the last boss of the DLC, it doesn't matter if it is the Lord of the Light Variation, you have to do it. And if you are going to do so, such a difficult task, you will expect your weapon to be incredibly powerful. But this is not the case, these weapons are actually so bad optimized that I struggled a lot to make it a little bit enjoyable, to make it a little bit powerful. I'm going to address the main reason why I think these weapons are actually very bad. They were lazy as hell with this weapon. We have the same power stance moveset that we have with the original Radan swords. And the main reason why I don't like it is because it devours a lot of stamina and it doesn't deal a lot of stance damage, it's not fast enough to be benefited by the Rodent Windsor Insignia or Millicent prosthesis or any successive attack buff and it doesn't deal a lot of regular damage. It has a poor tracking, a very poor tracking which means that for example if you dodge and you try to, to do the rolling attack it will not hit your target if your target moved a little bit. So it is something very very horrible that I really didn't want to see in a weapon that is very hard to get. And another important reason why I don't like the weapons to be this way, with any other colossal sword you can double hand it and you will deal a lot of damage, uh, stance damage specifically, if you do some charge hit heavy attacks. In this case you can do that because you are forced to play with the power stance moveset and if you want to do a heavy attack, it is not a special power stance heavy attack, it's just a regular heavy attack that you will perform with only one weapon. This is something that I really don't like in the game and, and it's very disappointing that they did this weapon this way, specifically because in the boss fight they were extremely beautiful. The new moveset of Radan was very fast, it was savage, it was wild, it was enjoyable, it was very difficult to dodge as well. And what is what we get? The same boring moveset that we we had with the previous weapon. I am actually a little bit uh, upset right now if you can hear my voice, but I struggled a lot in the boss fights and I really don't feel that I crafted a powerful build for you guys. That's why I'm a little bit upset because there is no way that we can play these weapons with the playstyle that we are used to in this channel, bro. We have to play differently and that's exactly what I don't like about this weapon. The best and worst part of this weapon is its unique skill. Why it is the worst part as well? Because we have two different variations of the entire weapon, but both weapons are pretty much the the same and the only thing that changes is the skill, which means that they, instead of crafting two different weapons, they could just create two variations of the skill. For example, in the same weapon use the Promise Consort skill, which is beautiful, it's one of the most beautiful skills I've ever seen in this game. The problem is that it doesn't deal a significant amount of damage, it's actually very weak. And the other one is very cool as well. But why to separate it in two different weapons? Why to do that? I would accept it if the weapons were different in scale values or in something in particular, but the weapons are both the same. And if you want to use both weapons at the same time to have the two skills available simultaneously, you will have the other two swords in your back. Like, why bro? So basically they did something horrible with both weapons, but I want to go back again to the skills of each one. In the Lord variation we have a 3 input skill that uh, simulates the insane combo that Radance does in the second phase which is very amazing, the only problem as I previously established is that it doesn't deal a lot of damage, it is actually very poor damage, it doesn't have hyper armor in the first hit, in the second two hits it does have it, but I go back to the same, for a weapon that is very hard to get and for a skill that is very hard to pull out completely, 
why is this dealing that low amount of damage? The other one is a little bit easier to use because it is a fast hit and it is a lot simpler than the other one. Obviously, it did a little bit of less damage since it is only one hit and a few light effects, but this one has a very good advantage over the other one and it is that it can be charged, which can increase its damage significantly. Despite of having multiple downsides, we can highlight the amazing design the weapons have and the amazing skills that we can use uh, with both weapons. And I want to give you a good tip, you don't have to defeat Radan twice in order to get both variations, you can duplicate the remembrance using the mouse limbs that are available in the base game. All you have to do is stop one of those things and you will be able to duplicate any remembrance you want. For the Lord variation, we are going to use the Greatsword of Radan on plus 10 and any seal you have available to cast our main buffs, and I'm going to be using the Young Lion armor set. The best talismans we can use for this variation are the Viridian Amber Medallion on plus 3, the Shard of Alexander, the Old Lord's Talisman and the Claw Talisman. In our Flask of Wundros Physic, we are going to use the Blood Sucking Crack Tear and the Stone Barb Crack Tear. The reason why I'm using this combination of talismans and physic tears is because the weapon doesn't have a special moveset, it's the same moveset of the original source of Radan, and it's very difficult to manage your stamina with that power stance moveset. With this build, we are going to be dealing physical and magic damage, for that reason, Hall of Shabriri is the best body buff we can use to maximize our damage. However, in some scenarios, I actually needed more stamina, that's why I used Blood Oil Aromatic, because this body buff increases your stamina by a lot. And as I previously mentioned multiple times, this build devours stamina, so be sure to craft some Pickle Turtle Legs to boost your stamina regeneration speed, and if you can afford it, be sure to craft some well pickled turtle necks. So this is the equipment for the Lord version, now let's jump to the light version. For the second variation, it's going to be pretty much the same. The main differences are that we are going to use the light version of the weapon, we are going to use the same armor set, our seal, we are going to use the Viridian Amber Medallion on plus 3, the Shard of Alexander, and here's where the change begins. We are going to use the Godfrey Icon, because the skill of this weapon can be charged and it will deal more damage this way. And I am using the Blade of Mercy that will increase the damage after dealing a critical hit. Why I am not using this one with the previous variation? Because it is harder to break the stance of the enemies using the skill of the Lord variation, therefore we are not going to be able to deal multiple critical hits. And with this variation it is going to be a little bit easier to break the stance of the enemy, so the Blade of Mercy is a better option this time. We are going to use the same Physic Tears, the same alternative buff in case we need it, and our Pickle Turtle next. And for both versions we are going to use the same stats. We need 50 on Vigor, 25 on Mind, Endurance on 40, but if you have a higher level character be sure to use a lot of more Endurance, you will need it with these swords. We need 53 on Strength and Dexterity and we need 33 on Faith. Golden Vow and Hell of Shabriri are going to be our main buffs. And I have my Scatter Tree Blessing on the level 20 and it is a must for this build to have it on that level. Now that we have completed an optimized or build, what do you say if we become the consort of our little brother? Here we go. Nice, get down. Let's go, baby. <laughs> nice. Okay, second phase, let's go. No, dude. Let's get him. Heal, bro. Okay. Let's get him, guys. Let's rush it. 
Nice. Dude. Uh, That was amazing, bro. Amazing, bro. Let's go, baby. That was amazing. <laughs> nice. <laughs> 